by now you must be familiar with the four arithmetic operators what are they addition subtraction multiplication and division in this class you will study about some properties that these four arithmetic operators follow even more importantly you will see how these properties make our life better by making our calculations easier we start with the first property known as the commutative property of addition and multiplication now what does the word commute mean if i say i commute to school by bus what does it mean i go to school and then i come back home by bus that is go back and forth that is exactly what this means both addition and multiplication it works both ways either you do a plus b or b plus a a into b or b into a the changing the order does not affect the answer that is what it means and what are this a and b this a and b belongs to any of those five number systems you st you remember we studied it in the last class five number systems what were they natural numbers whole numbers integers or uh, rational numbers real numbers so you take any two natural numbers any two integers any two real numbers and you add them or you multiply them the answer does not depend on the order 2 into 3 will be the same as 3 into 2 then what about the other two what about subtraction and division are they not commutative yes they are not commutative why is that we will see with an example 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 3 are not same this is 1 and this is minus 1 and 10 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 10 are not same this is 5 and this is 1 by 5 the answer is not same the order affects subtraction and division but it does not affect addition and multiplication this brings us to our second property known as the associative property this is our second property and you see how in the first property we dealt with just two numbers here we are dealing with three numbers and what does the associative property of addition or multiplication give us if you have to multiply three numbers you have all the liberty to choose which two numbers you want to multiply you can multiply the first two or the last two you can choose it is all the same so whether you choose the first two or the last two your answer will be same it is the same for multiplication it is same for uh, addition also and does that mean that it is not same for subtraction and division yes you are right you will get different answers i will just show you a small example here i have taken the last two numbers 6 minus 1 will be 5 but here i have taken the first two numbers 3 minus 2 will be 1 so it is does not work associative property does not work for uh, subtraction or division it works only for multiplication and addition now how does this help us in our daily life let me show you an example but before that let me tell you you have to know all the factors of the multiples of 10 what do i mean by the multiples of 10 anything that ends with 0 like 10 100 1000 you must know what numbers multiplied gives you 10 gives you 100 gives you 1000 you must be aware of that i will just give you a brief example see 125 into 8 250 into 4 500 into 2 200 into 5 all of this will give you 1000 so please keep that in mind this will help you to do these sort of problems now i will show you an example where associative property makes your life easy it will just help you do a complicated a complicated calculation in just one minute 125 into 99 into 8 see now if you were to do 99 into 8 first and then multiply the whole thing to 125 just imagine how much time it's going to take but now see 125 into 8 into 99 how did i write this what rule have i applied here commutativity 
now remember if this if this question comes for exam you have to mention here in a side bracket remember to mention that you have used the property of commutativity you will lose marks if you don't mention that so that is the first part we have got 8 to this side and now in the next step what do we do 125 into 8 into 99 now what rule have i used here i have used the associativity remember to mention it now what is 125 into 8 it is 1000 we just mentioned that right and 99 into 1000 is this see this is how associativity helps you and the same thing works if you are adding three numbers also but in that case you have to remember what numbers added will give you 10 or you know 10 or multiples of 10 for example watch out for numbers ending with 7 and 3 8 and 2 6 and 4 and 5 and 5 remember these numbers the the, uh, the numbers which end with these sort of digits try to group them together try to bring them together for example see this 73 plus 88 plus 27 you have to add three numbers but see this these two will together give you a 10 so try to regroup and bring it together to 73 so first step you remember what i said remember to mention what property you are using you will lose marks if you don't say that 73 now i am grouping these two together what is this this will be a 100 plus 88 188 this is how associativity makes your calculations easy what does it allow you to do it allows you to regroup when you are multiplying or when you are adding three numbers it allows you to regroup and so that it makes your calculation easy but then that is not how always numbers are going to be right now you are always not going to be uh, getting numbers uh, which will be multiples of 10 right what if you get numbers like this what if you have to multiply numbers like this that is where our third property steps in to help us we will go to the third property which is known as the distributive property this is the third property i often see students getting confused between the associative property and the distributive property because both of them deals with three numbers yes it is true both of them deal with the three numbers but the difference lies in the number of operators in the associative property there is only one operator involved for example you are just multiplying three numbers this is the associative property you are just multiplying three numbers there is only one operator involved but then in the distributive property there are two operators involved it is called the distributive property of multiplication over addition and what does that say now think of it as a teacher with a box of chocolates right so these are two classes and there is a hall across them so the teacher picks up the box of chocolates she goes to the first class then she crosses across the hall with the box of the chocolates and she goes to the second class so that is exactly what is happening here just like a teacher distributing chocolates here we have the distribution of this a so this does not uh, it is not only for addition it works for subtraction also exactly like this first the teacher goes to the first class and then she crosses across the hall goes to the second class so how does this help you let me show there what is 99 99 is 100 minus 1 right so write this as 100 minus 1 then what do you have 25 first with a 100 then go across the hall then to the second number that would be 100 minus 25 would be 75 
okay this is the answer see this is how distributive property makes these sort of questions easy let us see one more example now look at this question there are too many multiplication signs and addition signs and all of that right to make uh, to make sense of this always try to put brackets that will give you an idea of what has to be done so wherever you see a multiplication sign or in case if there is a division sign remember to put brackets around it so here you see the multiplication sign put brackets around it here brackets around it and then what do you see a 129 and a multiplication sign a 120 sorry 128 and a multiplication sign so there you can write it like this bring 128 to this side why is that because of commutativity whenever you do that remember to mention it then see this is common in both sides take it out 128 into what is left here 65 what is left here 35 now what do you have this added gives 100 Hundred into this. See, this uh, is how distributive property helps us. Now we come to the fourth property. Now we come to the fourth property, which is about additive identity and multiplicative identity. What does that mean? It means if you add something, what is that number that acts like a mirror? That means, for example, you take any number, say four. what is that number that acts like a mirror and gives you 4 itself and what do we mean by multiplicative identity again i will take 4 itself what is that number which when multiplied with any other number acts like a mirror and gives that answer itself that is what identity means it shows yourself it shows that number itself so what is that number zero additive identity is zero and here what is the multiplicative identity one so this is the multiplicative and the additive identities now we go to the fifth and the final property known as the closure property now we come to our last and final property known as the closure property but then in most books you will see that this is what they start with but i wanted to save it for the last because there are different rules for different systems so i just wanted to go through the systems also once again what have we learned so far we learned about the natural numbers which is 1 2 3 etc remember after 1 2 comes there are no fractions in between the second one is the whole numbers it includes all of the natural numbers and zero then we have the integers they have all of the whole numbers and the negative numbers and what what do we have next the rational numbers what are rational numbers they include all the integers and the numbers which come in between how do they look like see between 1 and 2 all the fractions that come here q includes all of that fractions and the last one is the real number and what do the real numbers contain they contain all of these they contain all the numbers which can be written as a fraction which are the rational numbers and also the irrational numbers which means the ones which cannot be written like this for example the numbers like root 2 root 3 etc or in other words the numbers which have non terminating non recurring uh, decimal expansions they just go on and on and on that is the real number real number system so what does the closure property mean what happens when you close a room whoever is inside cannot go out that is exactly what closure property means the closure property under addition means if you take two numbers and add them the answer still lies in that system for example take any two natural numbers add them the answer will still belong to natural numbers this sign means belongs to or lies in so 5 plus 2 or uh, 3 plus 2 is 5 which is again a natural number take two real numbers and add answer will again be a real number take two rational numbers and add the answer will again be a rational number or in other words under 
under addition and also the same with multiplication under addition and multiplication all of these five number systems are closed what does that mean you take any two elements and add them or multiply them the answer will still remain in that system next we will see what happens under subtraction in subtraction these three the last three are closed you take any two any two integers and subtract them take any two rational numbers and subtract them the answer will still remain there but then natural numbers not closed whole numbers not closed why is that let us take an example and see why it is not closed take 3 and take 2 Do two minus three. Your answer is minus one. Minus one is not a natural number. Minus one is not a whole number. So it is not closed. It has. You have taken two natural numbers. You have subtracted them, but the answer lies outside the natural number set. So under multiplication, under uh, under multiplication and addition, all these five are closed. But under subtraction only these three are closed natural numbers and whole numbers are not closed now we come to the last arithmetic operations which is what under division can you guess can you guess which will be closed none of them are closed why because of this gentleman here because of zero this is a trouble maker because of the existence of zero in all of these four systems none of them are closed why is that see any number divided by zero is not defined that means any number divided by zero cannot be a whole number cannot be an integer cannot be a rational number whatever because of this zero here this trouble maker here none of these are closed under division but zero by one is fine any number when zero coming in numerator is fine the answer is zero itself so that is fine but then when it comes in the denominator we have problem there it is not defined because it tends to infinity because of the zero here none of this are closed under division but then see the natural numbers natural numbers does not have zero but still division is not uh, uh, division is not closed why is that let me show you 2 divided by 3 right the answer is not a natural number what is this 2 divided by 3 4 divided by 2 is fine the answer is 2 which is still a natural number that is fine but then if i choose 2 and 3 and i take 2 divided by 3 what am i getting i am getting a rational number in here i am taking two natural numbers and i am dividing them but the answer that i am getting is not a natural number it goes down to the rational number system so what did we learn under multiplication and addition all the five systems are closed no problem they they all follow the closure property but with respect to subtraction the last three follow the closure property the first two don't and as for division all the five of them do not follow the closure property none of them is closed for the last four the reason is because of zero for the first one the set of natural numbers it does not have zero but still it is not closed so that's it for today what did we learn we learned about certain properties that the arithmetic operators follow and we saw how it makes our calculations easy how does it do that it helps us to regroup if we regroup our uh, multiplication the numbers that we have to multiply or the numbers that we have to add we can make our calculations easy if we regroup them So that's it for today till I meet you next time you take care assalamu alaikum